Good morning and welcome. Thank you for joining us for the 2022 STEM Education Day at the Capitol. My name is Solandra Bowman and I am delighted to be your host for today's event. It is organized by South Carolina's Coalition for Mathematics and Science. Joining us today are our 2022 South Carolina STEM Educator of the Year finalists and a host of honored speakers. We will start with Dr. Tom Peters. Dr. Peters serves as the Executive Director of South Carolina's Coalition for Mathematics and Science, founded in 2024 by BMW Manufacturing Company, DuPont, Michelin North America, and Duke Energy. It is hosted by the College of Engineering, Computing, and Applied Science at Clemson University. Dr. Peters. Thank you. This is day of celebration and we should be happy and celebratory. So how about a cheer for STEM education? Can we hear? That's, that is a great way to start. This is our fifth STEM education day at the state capitol. And I'd like to start today's celebration with a focus on STEM students. And I have a letter in my hands from US Senator Tim Scott, I'd like to read that letter. In particular, I'd like to read that letter to our friends here from the first tech challenge team in Kershaw, South Carolina. This is team 1761 and they are on their way to a championship in Houston. This be time for another chair. So say hello to Jenna Henry, Celeste Sullivan. You can wave when I say your name, it's okay. <laughs> Peyton Barrett, Weston Hook, Josh Hancock, Josh Harriet. Did I say a name wrong? I'm sure, oh good, okay. Cause you know, they're filming this live and if I make a mistake, it'll be on forever, <laughs> right? <laughs> so here's the letter from Senator Scott. Dear student, it's my privilege to welcome you to this year's STEM Education Day at the State Capitol. Education is the closest thing to magic that we have here in America. I join your teachers, your family, and your friends in commending you for your efforts and dedication. I look forward to hearing of your continued success. Students like you are the future of our country. Continue to dream big. Sincerely, Tim Scott, United States Senator. <laughs> STEM is about dreaming big. It is about turning ideas into actions, into the betterment of life and living for all folks in South Carolina and beyond. We recognize STEM today in a variety of ways. And one of the ways in which we recognize STEM education is through a proclamation from the governor of South Carolina. And I'm pleased to turn the podium over to Jenna Henry, who will read the proclamation on behalf of the governor. Jenna, it's all yours. Whereas science, technology, engineering, and mathematics are recognized as world-class knowledge and to be mastered by all graduates of South Carolina schools. And whereas opportunities in STEM careers, fields such as advanced manufacturing, advanced materials, aerospace, automotive, information technologies, and life sciences continue to grow in the Palmetto State. And whereas STEM learning in schools and after school and in a wide variety of formal and informal learning settings and all contribute to increase STEM knowledge and skills. And whereas partnerships between education, industry, and community are key to promoting, supporting, and improving STEM education in South Carolina. And whereas STEM learning is enhanced by dedicated and well-prepared teachers, mentors, volunteers, and whereas the Palmetto State is committed to providing its next generation of leaders with a rigorous, well-rounded education. And whereas it is important to recognize and promote student and teacher accomplishments in STEM. Now, therefore, I, Henry McMaster, Governor of the Great State of South Carolina, do hereby proclaim March 17, 2022 as STEM Education Day throughout the state 
and encourage all South Carolinians to join me in recognizing the positive impact of STEM education on the quality of life and the residents of the Palmetto State. Henry Maxster, Governor of South Carolina. So remember, Jenny, yes, the photo mm -hmm. opportunity here. <laughs> Thank you. Let's give Jenna another big hand. STEM education promotes bravery. That is a brave young lady. STEM education promotes a whole lot of things. We're able to gather here today face-to-face -face in person because of STEM educators, STEM students, and those who became STEM professionals. We owe all of them a moment of appreciation and applause. So let's remember those who allow us to be here today. It is great to see so many good friends and colleagues and partners, and I'm gonna go mix and mingle with you and turn the program back over to Ms. Bowman. Up next, we have Aaron Ford. Aaron Ford is Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of SC Bio. Mrs. Ford works on corporate strategies emanating from the organization's three statewide offices its board, and hundreds of supporting members and investors. Her comprehensive responsibilities include serving as primary lead for SC Bio's business operations and finances, championing investor relations and existing industry, industry strategies, and spearheading integrated marketing initiatives. Welcome, Erin. Thank you. Well, SC Bio is proud to be a part of today's celebration, honoring STEM educators and uh, promoting and supporting STEM education, a critical component of our workforce development infrastructure. SC Bio is South Carolina's leading economic development organization and industry association, representing the life sciences industry, including pharmaceutical and medical device companies, research and development organizations, digital health and logistic companies, and others supporting the advancement of science and technology. Life sciences is the fastest growing industry in South Carolina with over 2,000 firms in 42 of our 46 counties. The life sciences industry is STEM, and we are working to create more awareness of the career opportunities in our schools. Today, we are excited to announce the first of its kind game-changing solution to solving South Carolina's life sciences industry workforce needs. This fall, middle school students throughout our state will be able to download Rad Lab, a free-to-play, entertaining, geo-specific career pathway app on their phone. States, regions, and industry all want the same thing, a qualified workforce pipeline. By transforming skills development and career pathways into mobile gaming technology, we can revolutionize how the next generation engages in and views skills-based careers at an earlier age from wherever they are. And meeting Gen Z where they are, on their phones, through fun mobile skills training customized to go and grow with them we can build a more qualified workforce for years to come, including under-resourced communities, an important aspect to provide access to all students. Nephron Pharmaceuticals, the South Carolina Power Team, the South Carolina Hospital Association are our game team leaders with additional support from Vicor Scientific, MUSC, and RhythmLink. The South Carolina Governor's School for Science and Math and Fisher Middle School in Greenville County will be part of the development of Rad Lab as we gamify our industry. We are working shoulder to shoulder with Skills Gap, a woman owned South Carolina tech company to bring Rad Lab, a skillionaire game to life. 
The STEM skills learned on this app will educate middle school students on the pathways for both health sciences and life sciences on the career opportunities and learn how they overlap and support each other. Continued growth and support of STEM educators is critical to the continued success of this STEM initiative. Where's your STEM is the question posed to us for STEM Education Month. Where's our STEM? It's in the game. Thank you. Thank you, Erin. It's in the game. Latia Gary holds a Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering and MBA. She has worked for the past 20 years in engineering, construction, and manufacturing in either an engineering or management role and currently runs a consulting firm, LG Solutions LLC. The firm assists businesses in improving their customer base, perception, quality of product or service provided, and competitive advantage through such methods as auditing, Lean and Six Sigma process improvement tools. Latia's passion is mentoring young adults, and she currently serves as the South Carolina Chair for Million Women, Million Women Mentor SC. Welcome, Latia. Good morning, good morning. At Million Women Mentors, our vision is to obtain equality for young girls and women pursuing STEM careers. By, in South Carolina by collaborating with businesses and organizations within the state, including nonprofits in order to do so. In 2017, our state, our state chapter was formed by a young lady, by a high school student named Ariana. Ariana received mentoring by the board. And in that mentoring, we saw her growth and development. When she graduated and went on to college, the board decided to continue having a student lead. As a group of women who wants to encourage young girls to pursue STEM careers, we thought it was important to keep a young lady on the board. In past years, we've had wonderful applicants. We always were able to get to a top three to be able to select one. But we wanted more. We wanted a group of young ladies. Well, this year, the applicants that applied were spectacular. Instead of a top three, we had a top five. And out of that top five, the mix of capabilities and skill sets of these young ladies were spectacular. And we decided we're keeping, and we have a top four. We have four students leads this year. If you guys would mind joining me. Evelyn Plakov, she's a senior. She's a senior at Spring Valley High School who plans to pursue a degree in biomedical engineering at either Clemson University Honors Program or the University of South Carolina Honors Program. Next, we have Kira Burton. Kira is a junior at South Point High School. She plans to pursue an engineering degree in material science. Candice Green. Candace Green is a sophomore at Fairfield Central High School who's considering a degree in either chemistry, sports medicine, or astronomy. Kinsley Green. Kinsley is a freshman at Fairfield High School considering a degree in astrophysics, biochemistry, or psychiatry. She's a freshman, okay? I just want to say that one more time. <laughs> This year, we are saddened to see our current student lead leave, Miranda Salas Sagat. We wish her much success as she pursues <laughs> as she pursues a degree in physics. Thank you, guys. These ladies, they're a joy, and I look forward to more opportunities and working with them and also seeing their development and becoming more confident young ladies pursuing STEM careers. Thank you. Thank you, Latia and young ladies. We certainly look forward to bearing witness to their development for years to come. 
Up next, we have Lynn Mann. She is the Senior Manager for Community and Public Affairs for Flora Corporation based in Greenville, South Carolina. She has more than 25 years experience in STEM industries and STEM education, working for global manufacturing and engineering companies, as well as in public education. A native of South Carolina, she is a strong supporter of the growth of STEM in the state and beyond. She is excited to lead Flora's support as the title sponsor of the Imagine Upstate Festival on April 2nd. Lynn? Good morning and happy St. Patrick's Day. You know, um, Dr. Peters leads us in applause for everyone here, but I think we can all agree that one of the key drivers of progress in STEM education is the South Carolina Coalition of Math and Science. And I think Dr. Peters and his team needs a big round of applause. You know, in South Carolina, we have got a lot to celebrate. Gorgeous green space, economic growth, and a quality of life that's second to none. And in addition to attracting top talent to the state today, we're all working together to assure that we have a robust pipeline to provide the next generation of engineers, scientists, financial analysts, all of those highly skilled employees that are gonna lead us into the second half of the 21st century. You know, Floor is just one example of a global company with a significant presence in South Carolina. Floor's largest, uh, largest office in the entire world is in Greenville. And we can't hire qualified engineers quickly enough. And we love hiring from the home team. That's why we, invest in STEM education from kindergarten through graduate school, as well as workforce development and other community building programs. Because research tells us that children will either turn on or turn away from science, from math, from high technology subjects as early as fourth grade. Fourth grade, they're nine, and they're making that decision then. So the best way to assure that South Carolina has a robust world-class workforce 20 years from now is for us to invest in the quality of public education for our youngest learners today. And that investment has to reach every single child in every single school from every single background. We can't leave anyone behind. And that's why Floor is so excited to be the title sponsor this year for the Imagine Upstate Steam Festival in downtown Greenville. Okay, we've had a two year COVID pause, but we are thrilled to death to be welcoming thousands of students to downtown Greenville for a day long celebration of STEM focused on all of the awesome engineering focused companies in the upstate and around the state. That's what excites that thirst for knowledge, that thirst for a STEM career in children of all ages. So it's Saturday, April 2nd. We have ordered great weather. And if you haven't already, please make your plans to come and be with us on Main Street in Greenville. If for some reason you can't be in the upstate in April, then make sure that you attend Imagine Lakelands in Greenwood later this year. So on behalf of Floor and Imagine Upstate, thank you for your support of STEM education. We look forward to working with you to continue to drive progress across the state and beyond. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lynn. You've given us a lot to think about and certainly um, something that we can potentially do on April 2nd of this year. Now we transition to the energy sector. Lee Ford is the Director of Utility Strategy at Duke Energy in South Carolina. 
As such, she is the company's tip of the spear in developing strategies that will support Duke Energy customers in South Carolina. She is responsible for monitoring industry developments and advising the chief executive officer for the state on legislative and regulatory matters. Ms. Ford. Good morning, it is an honor to be here. We are here today to shine a light on the importance of education initiatives that will give South Carolina students the tools that they need to be competitive in the 21st century marketplace and to help power South Carolina's economic prosperity for decades to come. South Carolina indeed is continuing to develop at a rapid pace. Our state is an increasingly advanced manufacturing state and it's imperative that we recognize how critical a highly trained workforce is to those industries and to powering the thousands of jobs that they create. As Duke Energy and other utilities build the smart thinking grid of the future, having great minds on our team who understand science, technology, mathematics, and engineering will be critical to our success. That is why we have recently expanded support for a unique initiative that will bring Duke Energy Science Night to schools across our state. Working with Moorhead Planetarium and the South Carolina Coalition of Math and Science at Clemson University, the Duke Energy Foundation provided $30,000 to bring this program to 30 Title I schools by providing turnkey Science Night interactive education kits. Duke Energy Science Night will allow students, teachers, and families in elementary and middle school to engage in hands-on activities that enrich the science standards that are being taught in the classroom. That's enough supplies and education material for at least 200 students at each school. And we think it's a great opportunity to engage STEM students. We believe supporting activities and projects like this provided by great organizations will raise interest in the field of engineering as a career for young students across our state. Those students who master and pursue STEM careers will lead the efforts necessary to let our state prosper and compete in the 21st century. Duke Energy stands ready to support these initiatives that will help grow the work workforce and make sure that every day is a great day to be in South Carolina. Thank you for your time. Many thanks to you, Lee. Dr. Regina Seifra is chair of the advisory board for the South Carolina Coalition for Mathematics and Science, as well as the owner and principal of Verbalizing Visions, LLC. As a STEM education practitioner, researcher, and evaluator with over 20 years of experience, her efforts support research, learning, and practice within culturally sustaining operations and STEM education through fidelity of implementation and continuous improvement frameworks. Dr. Cypher. Greetings to everyone who joined us live here today at the Capitol and also being live streamed in our virtual world with South Carolina ETV on this great day of celebrating STEM education in South Carolina. Growing in STEM grants are awarded to schools that submit an innovative curriculum based on projects that incorporate multiple aspects of STEM while celebrating key life and career characteristics along with world-class skills from the South Carolina profile of a graduate. As chairwoman of the South Carolina Coalition for Mathematics and Science, it is my pleasure to recognize the following five schools and their academic advisors as awardees of the Growing in STEM grant. Our first awardee is Green Charter School of the Midlands and their academic advisor is Jody Isaacs. Their, pro <laughs> their project is Chickens in the Garden. Green Charter's Chicken in the Gardens are where our students are going to become chicken farmers. They are building a sustainable garden with chickens and edible plants. Sustainability is a key concept when teaching environmental education. This garden will show students the symbiotic relationship between humans, chickens, and gardening. The students will wear coveralls and get dirty in the garden, and they will plant seasonal crops that the chickens can eat. All ages, will 
uh, ensure that the, they are free from predators, predators and reside in a clean, healthy environment to lay eggs. Collecting eggs will be a favorite daily activity. And they have the question, who came first, the chicken, the egg, or the garden? <laughs> so can we please congratulate our friends from Green Charter School and their advisor, Jody Isaacs. Our second awardee is Wright Middle School and their academic advisor, Renee McClaslin. Their project's name is Changing Times 3D. Industry in America is changing to meet that, and to meet that change, students need to be exposed to more innovative ways of type and types of learning. Bringing 3D printing into the rural industrial areas will help students become more prepared to be successful in the world they will soon embark. The main idea of Changing Times 3D is to have fun in an innovative way that would also allow life skills for the future. The South Carolina standards on earth science, on earth's layers and scale modeling are the main academic focus. The project's activity will require the students to work in groups to create a 3D scale model of the earth's layers. So let us congratulate our friends at Wright Middle School. Our next school to be recognized is Loris Middle School and their academic advisor, Meredith Craven. Their project is Stream Olympics. When you think about the Olympics, the five iconic rings come to mind. When you think about South Carolina education, STEAM comes to mind and the five varied content areas that it represents. As the five Olympic rings signify unity, the five Olympic rings will mark each of the educational disciplines that engages students around the subjects of science, technology, engineering, arts, and math creating a unified education. STEAM Olympics is a week-long celebration encompassing a series of events designed to not only showcase the students' creativity, ingenuity, and abilities, but also commemorate their journey as 21st century thinkers. Students will complete, compete in activities and win medals. At the end of the week, an award ceremony will be held where they will be recognized for stellar achievements, collaboration, and teamwork. Let's congratulate our academic advisor, Meredith Craven, and the students at Loris Middle School for their award. Our fourth awardee to be recognized is Brown Ferry Elementary and their academic advisor, Dana Street. Their project is Robots Are Us. The Robots Are Us project will be a great addition to our robotics units that we have at our school. With the new technological advances in today's society, the needs are even greater for our students to, to obtain the necessary knowledge and skills to be competitive in today's workforce. The project consists of robotic team challenge kits, which will serve all students in grades three through five and can be used for many years. Students have to not only put together the robots, but learn how to code them. Students learn life and career skills like self-direct, like self-direction, as well as the ability to persevere. They have to be okay with not getting it right the first time and keep trying to make it work. We currently have a few simple robotic kits, but the students love working with them and we want to dig deeper into robotics. So congratulations to Brown's Theory and their academic advisor, Dana Street, to use their award to get more kids. <laughs> and our final awardee for this term is the Ladies Island Middle School and their academic advisor, Nan Burbanich. Their project's name is Let It Grow, Let It Grow. Let It Grow, Let It Grow introduces our students to the world of agriculture and environmental sciences. We will use our grant to establish two programs, a seed to sales program, where they will grow plants as a fundraiser and a nurtured by nature program, incorporating wellness and environmental stewardship. For both programs, students will get hands-on experience growing plants from seeds and using an existing greenhouse space. These plants will be used to enhance the outdoor classroom locations at Ladies Island Middle School campus and sold to the local community. Congratulations to Nan Burbanich and the Ladies Island Middle School team. 
On behalf of the board, staff, and friends of the South Carolina Coalition for Mathematics and Science, our uh, friends here who are gathered together, again, congratulations to all the awardees. We're looking forward to all the awesome work that we're gonna see coming from these grants. And we would like to invite others to apply for next year's awards. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Cypher. And certainly for those in attendance who were not grant recipients today, we hope that you will apply for next year's grant competition. Up next, we will recognize the winner of the 3D printing competition and invite Joshua Snydman to the podium. Joshua Snydman is Vice President of Learning Blade, focusing on district and school-wide implementation strategies. Learning Blade is a STEM computer science focused resource with over 400 online lessons to help students see themselves in the future workforce. A former Albert Einstein Distinguished Educator Fellow at the Department of Energy in the Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy, a 10 year middle school math and science teacher, he has provided teacher PD to NASA, NOAA, the Smithsonian, the U.S. Department of Education, and more. Joshua, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. This is uh, an incredible event. I just want to say thank you, uh, Tom, and your team. Working with you guys is really fantastic. Um, getting to meet the past STEM educators of the year has been one of the most rewarding parts of my job, getting to meet professional STEM educators that do incredible work. So I'm excited to find out who the next STEM educator of the year is. Quick question, who's a, who's a teacher in the room? I see a bunch of you. So do your, do your students ever ask you, when will I ever use this, right? So they wanna know, they wanna know how math relates to the real world, how science relates to the real world. And I think what's exciting is providing STEM experiences that show students the connection. So I like, we, at Learning Blade, I, we like to think of STEM as workforce development, priming the pump, building the pipeline of future talent. And so all of us here today, we drink that Kool-Aid, but it's definitely exciting. So part of our STEM day events, what we do at Learning Blade is we offer a competition to win a 3D printer to the school that does the most online lessons in Learning Blade over the STEM month leading up to Pi Day. And I'm excited to say that uh, David Salkin and River Ridge Academy, we got a big poster here. Um, they did the most lessons this month. Last year, it was the STEM educators of the year that did the most lessons. Um, but uh, this year, Tom, there were over 20,000 online STEM lessons completed in that month uh, by students in South Carolina. So, you know, Learning Blade, are, we have online lessons and 3D printing lessons, but we're just excited to be part of the STEM education ecosystem uh, partnered with all of you guys to, to build a better future um, and, and help students see themselves in STEM. Representation, seeing themselves in STEM is so critical. So um, thank you for the opportunity today and uh, I can't wait for what's coming next. Yeah. Thank you, Joshua. We now have the pleasure of hearing from the 2021 STEM Educator of the Year, Amy Baldwin. Amy Baldwin is an educator at Oak Brook Middle, teaching Project Lead the Way's Gateway to Technology program. She was named the 2021 SC STEM Educator of the Year, and she believes all students should have access to highly engaging STEM programs. She has worked over the past year sharing her platform, changing the face of STEM to help others start programs to encourage girls and minorities to explore STEM programs. Amy? Well, I'm excited to be here in person to celebrate STEM education in South Carolina. Growing up in our great state and public schools in Dorchester District 2, I've been blessed with some of the best educators in the state. I knew growing up at an early age, I wanted to teach. And as I continued through school, my teachers inspired me to take risks, to try new things, and encouraged me to follow my passions. I try to do that and inspire my students in the same way every day. 
It's hard to believe that a year ago, I was sitting in my classroom with my principal and my mom waiting to hear who the next STEM educator of the year would be. The Zoom call was nothing compared to the excitement that I can feel in this room today. When my name was announced, I was surprised and excited to find out I would represent the state of South Carolina. I find it appropriate for that for the second year in the row, STEM Education Day is on March 17th. My high school algebra teacher, Ms. Bunch, would always say, good luck is where hard work and dedication meet. Today is a lucky day for all of the STEM educators in South Carolina because it is the day to celebrate your hard work and ded dedication to your craft. As STEM educators, we are lucky to be surrounded by amazing students that help us learn, grow, and evolve as educators. I know that STEM educators across the state, especially those finalists in the room today, have good luck because of their hard work and dedication. I have enjoyed the last year learning about STEM education across the state through meetings with various stakeholders, spending time with our finalists as we started the first ever STEM educator cohort. I hope that sharing my platform, Changing the Face of STEM, has helped people see my passion help all students succeed, especially girls in STEM education. I know STEM educators will continue to take a deep, deeper look into different ways to meet the needs of all students and prepare them to be successful in our ever-changing world. Through this journey, I realized that STEM educators across our state are passionate about teaching. These amazing educators work to ignite the passion in their students while sharing their successes and accomplishments like the team behind us today. These amazing STEM educators have a true passion for this field and wish to share that passion with their students, allowing students to explore future opportunities and careers. As we kick off STEM Education Week, I challenge all stakeholders to continue to support STEM education and reach out to be part of the next generation's good luck. Students will need to continue to see ways that STEM impacts their lives and see how they continue to impact the world through their STEM knowledge. This year's theme is, where's your STEM? I challenge each of you over the next few weeks to, to reflect on how this simply, simply amazing phrase has had an impact on your life. Our hard work, our dedication to this field has allowed our students good luck to carry them forward. And we are all extremely lucky to live in the amazing state of South Carolina where STEM education is a top priority. I thank all of you who have joined me here today. Thank you, Amy, and thank you for serving our state and advancing STEM education so valiantly. There are five finalists for the STEM Educator of the Year Award, and Susie Shannon will introduce them in just a moment, but I will first introduce her. Susie Shannon serves as the President and CEO of the South Carolina Council on Competitiveness a nonpartisan, business-led, nonprofit organization that drives South Carolina's long-term economic growth through managing select industry clusters and providing the research, network, and resources that clusters require to thrive. The initiatives and industry clusters directly managed by the council include SC Aerospace, SC Logistics, SC Tech, Cybersecure SC, Transform SC and SC Fraunhofer USA Alliance. Ms. Shannon. Thank you, Solandra. I was getting ready to stop you so we could actually get to the main event. As some of my folks I know, I'm not dead yet, so we're not we're not going to get there yet. But and I got to tell you, Amy is a hard act to follow. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> I just, on behalf of the entire SC Competes team, working with Amy over the last year has just been, I know, an enriching, rewarding experience, personal to them. So thank you for that from me. So um, thank you to all of the schools who are logged on remotely and all of you watching on South Carolina ETV's Facebook Live. And what an enormous excitement as we announce our five uh, STEM Educator of the Year finalists to recognize their incredible achievements in science, technology, 
technology, engineering, and math education. Thank you to our sponsors, Comporium and Bojangles, for their continuing support of our program to showcase these rock star educators. At SC Competes, we know that the ability to meet workforce needs is an evergreen issue for the long-term economic health of our state. Moreover, the recent labor shortage coming out of the pandemic, um, obviously predicted labor supply issues due to the aging of population right here and other structural factors, as well as the anticipated growth in high tech sectors, which by the way, pay high tech, um, high wage um, opportunities throughout our industries does present several challenges for our future workforce pipeline as we've been talking about today. First, a critical need does exist for more educators, particularly in STEM studies. And second, the nature of the jobs requiring advanced um, technical problem solving is absolutely critical. We know we need to widen that STEM pipeline, endowing them with world-class knowledge, offering them real world skills while at the same time allowing them the opportunity to develop those durable skills like problem solving and teamwork, because we know our children need to learn in all different directions. And these are all the skills that are needed to help our kids, you know, be ready for career college and citizenship. And that is why the STEM Educator of the Year Award is so important to us and to our state. Uh, not only are we highlighting the accomplishments of our best and brightest STEM teachers, but we're also shedding light on the critical role that STEM education plays in our overall economic competitiveness. And by the way, in helping us to insulate against economic downslides, they do happen every now and then. And we know that a STEM skilled workforce helps us to grow faster in the good times and to slow down the effect of the bad times. Our team at SC competes and our judges were absolutely blown away by the talent this year, that intellectual infrastructure sitting inside the classrooms, going higher, going bigger, raising that sight line. Um, I truly felt for the team because narrowing them was no easy task. We really wanted to package up each of the applicants and their platforms and offer them as Christmas presents to everybody. So from engineering to marine science, clean energy to AP math, our applicants this year have demonstrated that they are dedicating to preparing our next generation of rock star innovators. Sort of like that very cool James Webb Space Telescope that's been launched to look at galaxies and look at stars and look at planets. Well, they actually, you know, um, that's what our teachers do. They give the students that extra push, that extra boost. That Webb Space Telescope was actually launched near the equator to give the rockets an extra boost. And that's what our STEM teachers do. They live at the equator with our students, giving them that extra push, extra boost to help them succeed in life. And for that, we thank you. So to our five finalists, um, Annie Johnson, Horry County Schools. We're gonna come back one minute. Um, Ashley Blackwelder, Spartanburg Sixth School District. We're gonna come back to them in just a moment. Kirsten Bullington, Richland Two School District. Dr. Marcia Neal, Charleston County School District. And Dr. Nicole Yemethy, Pickens County School District. We're gonna come back to them at the moment, but I was just so excited to say their names. I really hadn't jumped on ahead. So you are all making a significant difference in the lives of your students and community by providing excellent curriculum, encouraging lifelong learning, and inspiring a passion um, beyond the classroom and into the future. So I'm excited to announce that each finalist will receive a $1,000 cash prize as a token of our appreciation. <laughs> for all you do for your students, your school, your district, your community, our state, so congratulations. We did ask each applicant to share with the judges their own individual STEM platform, how they would like to highlight STEM education over the next year. So I'm now um, honored to present each student, or excuse me, each finalist, I'm sure they're still lifelong students, um, with your certificate and ask them to briefly share a bit about themselves as well as about their STEM platform. So, and apparently um, Alex is making us do a photo opportunity as well. So we'll have a brief one of those. Um, 
Annie Johnson. Clean Energy Technology honors Marine Science and AP Environmental Science Academy for the Arts, Science and Technology, Horry County Schools, my alma mater, by the way, and my alma mater was Loris Middle School. So yay, yay on that one. So Annie's platform is Build Your Own Eco STEM. Hello, I'm Annie Johnson, like she said, from the Academy for the Arts, Science and Technology in Myrtle Beach. I teach clean energy technology with environmental engineering, advanced placement environmental science, and honors marine science to the most awesome 11th and 12th graders in the state. I truly appreciate being nominated by my principal, Kelly Wilson, on, and for the support and encouragement I have received from all the faculty and staff at AAST. I especially want to thank my students for their amazing work this school year, not only on our STEM projects in the classroom, but also the extra work entering video competitions, writing grants, and volunteering at open houses and STEM nights. If I am chosen as STEM Educator of the Year, my platform will be Build Your Ecosystem. The demand for STEM jobs in South Carolina and across the nation has never been greater, and STEM fields are constantly changing. STEM teachers need strong community partnerships to help us prepare and inspire our students. Learning from the experts is always best. We must create opportunities for students to realize the connection with what we are doing in the classroom to the real world. Community partnerships empower and energize teachers to try new STEM projects with confidence, um, knowing that they have a professional in the field to answer questions, provide guidance, and explain current workforce needs. This is what it means to build your ecosystem. I've been very fortunate this year to have had several guest speakers from local industries and Coastal Carolina University. Tomorrow, my students are touring Clemson's Graduate Education Center and Energy Innovation Center, as well as STEM programs at the College of Charleston. We're hoping to get to the University of South Carolina this year as well. We, um, the relationships between STEM teachers and partners creates a springboard for students to take the leap from their K-12 education to a fulfilling, world-changing STEM career. I would love to encourage other teachers and schools to seek out local partnerships with STEM educational institutions and industries for guest speakers, mentors for project-based learning, work-based learning field experiences, and to join citizen science projects. Our STEM students will develop innovative solutions to today's problems. We can encourage them by getting them involved in making a difference as early as possible. Local partnerships help students realize the possibilities available to them. Let's build our ecosystems. Thank you. And you can't go yet. Here we go. Yep. <laughs> I just do what I'm told. <laughs> All right. Next up is Ashley Blackwelder, STEAM coordinator, Spartanburg 6 School District. Ashley's platform is taking the mystery out of STEM. Morning. I am now in my 18th year of teaching at Fair Forest Elementary School, and I'm incredibly honored to be included in this group of outstanding STEM educators today. In the world of elementary education, a STEM or a STEAM focus is a natural fit for how our children learn. Our youngest learners are inquisitive. They're willing to take risks and make messes to make new discoveries. They're eager to point out the connections they see between the classroom and the real world. In my role as a STEAM coordinator at my school, I'm fortunate enough to provide and share these wow moments with my students each and every day. I'm also tasked with the challenge and the privilege of working alongside our classroom teachers to ensure that these opportunities happen for every child in our school. My platform is taking the mystery out of STEM because even though it may seem like a simple task, a rigorous and engaging school-wide STEM program requires a great deal of understanding, trust, and effort from everyone involved. For the outsiders looking in, whether they're parents trying to understand what engineering means to their kindergartner, or a veteran teacher who's trying to shift his or her practices after years in the classroom, STEM can be something that many just don't get. I hope to have some part in changing that. It's about communicating with and involving our families so they can learn alongside their children. It's about supporting teachers not just with materials, but with the time to learn how to effectively utilize resources in their classrooms, the space to make mistakes and learn from them, and feedback that is constructive rather than discouraging. 
It's about really collaborating, providing examples of activities and strategies that work, and truly listening to new ideas and the, with the understanding that there is no one right way to do STEM, but there are countless ways to do it well. I get to work on these things every day at my own school, and I'm so excited about the possibility of collaborating with other educators in our state to take the mystery out of STEM and make it accessible to all of our students. Thank you. Next up is Kirsten Bullington. Next energy engineering instructor, Richland II Institute of Innovation, or as we know locally, R2I2, Richland II School District. Kirsten's platform is integrating STEM education and industry to increase opportunities for all. Thank you. Good morning. I have the privilege of working with amazing students from each of our district's high schools as they collaborate to solve local and global energy problems. From building our own electric vehicle to collaborating across borders on solar energy, their solutions are strengthened by their diverse experiences and backgrounds. The ability to work effectively in heterogeneous groups is a soft skill that has been emphasized by our Career and Technical Advisory Committee as being just as important as the technical skills they are seeking in potential employees. Our stakeholder feedback has led to a more interdisciplinary and authentic approach to our STEM classes, which in turn has increased student engagement. To that end, my platform is integrating STEM education with industry to increase career opportunities for all. Here in South Carolina, we are privileged to have, um, to have multinational corporations as well as small businesses, all eager to work with us to increase student outcomes. I would like to expand how we listen to industry as well as to our students and their families so that we can make deep, forge deeper connections to the needs and interests of our students with the projected growth of STEM careers. Because in addition to our universities, there are many opportunities for lucrative careers that begin with apprenticeships and two-year technician degrees, particularly in the emerging fields of electric vehicles, logistics, and machine learning. As a STEM instructor, I feel it is my responsibility not only to expose our students to uh, these emerging technologies, but to also provide that, that pave the way to these multiple pathways of success. All students in our state deserve access to quality STEM education that leads to fulfilling careers. And I am grateful to the Council of Competitiveness and all the other sponsors of this award for shining a light on STEM education and its role in moving our state forward. Next up, we have Dr. Marcia Neal, sixth grade math and science teacher, Deer Park Middle School, Charleston County School District. Marcia's platform is the effectiveness of STEM initiatives on student academic success. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Dr. Marcia Neal, and I'm a sixth grade math and science teacher at Deer Park Middle School in Charleston, South Carolina. I'm, a final, I'm the finalist representing the Low Country. I would like to thank SC Tech, the South Carolina Council on Competitiveness, and the SC STEM Center for your support and sponsorship for the SC Educator of the Year. I've been teaching for 25 years. First, I started in the prison system. I taught GED in the state and federal systems in Michigan, and I've been in South Carolina in the public school system since 2007. Every single school that I've ever taught at in the public school system has been a Title I school without a STEM initiative school-wide. Um, if selected, my platform is based upon my doctoral uh, dissertation, which I finished in June, um, in STEM leadership, which looked at the perceptions of educators on the effectiveness of STEM education on the overall academic success of the students. My research showed that 94% of the um, educators that I interviewed believe that students benefit in all academic areas when um, exposed to STEM, not just math and science. The four main themes that emerged from my um, interviews were overall increased academic success, the ability 
you to think critically, the long-term impact on students, which included getting them out of poverty in the future, and the many different ways STEM can be implemented in the schools. The participants believe STEM education allows students to problem solve, learn from their mistakes, have applications to the real world, and allow students to think critically, which all leads to increased academic success in all subjects. Unfortunately, I found out in South Carolina, out of the 290 middle schools, less than 25% of us have a school-wide STEM initiative. My opinion is that needs to change. My platform would get out the message to all schools, the importance of STEM education, especially in middle school, where it seems to kind of be left behind on all subjects and the future of the students. Even if schools do not have a school-wide STEM initiative, teachers, in my opinion, should still be implementing STEM in their individual classrooms. STEM should be happening in all science classes across the state. So I know with the bell ringing that it was probably roll call or a vote, but I really did look up to see if anybody was returning to class. <laughs> so next up, we have Dr. Nicole Yemethy. Nicole, if you could come up, please. And let Nicole. Good afternoon. My name is Nicole, Dr. Nicole Yemethy, excuse me. I represent the upstate of South Carolina for the second year as a finalist for STEM Teacher of the Year. It is my honor to stand here and represent the upstate and great the Pickens School District, where I teach at Gettys Middle School. I teach Project Lead the Way, Medical Detectives to seventh and eighth grade, and Flight in Space to sixth grade, where we build things like kites and planes and gliders and hot air balloons. We launch real lot hot air balloons from our yards so the kids get connection to the real world. We do medical investigations and we delve into the questions of why is this patient sick? What is wrong with the brain and how do we fix it? as well as can we solve the crime of who killed me? It's always been a guilty teacher who runs down the hall away from the SRO, but they do a great job and they learn to investigate. If I'm selected as STEM Teacher of the Year for 2022, my platform is to continue to prove that STEM happens everywhere. STEM can happen at home. It can happen in your backyard. It can happen in the courtyard of the school or the four walls around your school or in your classroom, excuse me. No matter where we are, we are stemming. The kids were born to stem. They are stemmers. They like to build, they like to investigate, and they like to solve the mystery. Thank you. I'm loving the patriotic St. Patty's Day stuff. It's gonna be a great picture. So thank you all. I want to congratulate you on the accomplishment of finalist in this year's STEM Educator of the Year. Now I will turn it back over to Salandra and our friends at Comporium who will announce our 2022 STEM Educator of the Year winner. Thank you all. Thank you, Susie. And again, congratulations to all finalists. The time is upon us to announce the winner of the STEM, South Carolina STEM Educate, I'm sorry, to announce the South Carolina STEM Educator of the Year for 2022. We invite Matthew Dodge to the podium to do so. He is the Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer at Comporium. Dosh ensures that Comporium has the proper resources, processes, and reporting methods in place to effectively meet the company's customer service, revenue, and operating goals. Prior to his role as COO, he held the role of Executive Vice President of Customer Operations and External Affairs, where he helped spearhead key strategic initiatives with an emphasis on Comporium sales and customer service functions. Matthew. Thank you very much and good morning. I promise I will be brief. Um, but on behalf of the management and 1100 employees of Comporium, I'd like to say how excited we are uh, once again to join the South Carolina Council on Competitiveness and Bojangles in sponsoring the South Carolina STEM Educator of the Year. 
Comporium is a 128 year old company. We, were, uh, we began as Rock Hill Telephone Company and we're now a regional broadband company that provides state of the art technology across the Carolinas. I simply like to uh, echo the comments of our other private sector speakers um, you heard from this morning in saying that we are proof that there are high tech companies here in South Carolina that need talented STEM educated uh, workers to fulfill our mission. We would like nothing more than to continue to hire local workers who grew up here, were educated here, and will help us deliver our broadband services back into the communities we serve in order to fuel that virtuous cycle of uh, continual economic development. Thank you um, to everybody here for what you're doing uh, to help fulfill, uh, fill that talent pipeline. I'd also like to commend each of our finalists for the passion and academic innovation uh, that you bring to your students. Uh, for as we all know, even if a student does not go on to become an electrical engineer or a Java programmer, the analytical thinking skills that they will learn through STEM education will serve them in whatever they do in life. And having said that, it is my honor to announce that the 2022 South Carolina STEM Educator of the Year is Kristen Bullington, Next Energy Engineering Instructor at Richmond Two. Give you the podium in one sec. Oh, wow, I am deeply honored, and um, I have a few people to thank. Um, the um, first should be my first science teacher, which was my dad, um, a retired analytical chemist um, who worked for 41 years in um, wastewater treatment, which is not a glamorous career, but is one um, in which he could, in, he could show me his passion for science and community service. Um, and if I can only do half as uh, much for my own two children, Darwin, who was with me today, and my daughter, Round, who's taking a math test, which seemed like a good enough excuse to skip, um, I, I will have been blessed. Um, I am deeply honored because every single one of these educators um, is deserving of this honor. I have been amazed by the multitude of programs that we have in this state, um, and it makes me happy that I can raise my own two children here. Um, there are people who have um, helped me be a better educator in human, um, and in no particular order, um, Kareem Breckett, Alvin Presley, um, you know, helped me when I first came to South Carolina, and then um, Jennifer Kane, Maria Owens, Robin Jones, who's watching my classes right now so I can be here, um, and all the teachers at R2I2. Um, I'm privileged to work in a district that um, values innovation and creativity um, for that. Um, I'm obviously not doing very good at this, uh, having a, a platform, but, um, but my platform is one I'm very passionate about. Um, I believe that we um, can work together to make better connections with what our students want and what our industries want. I think it's just a matter of connecting them. And to do that, that's listening. I, before education, I worked in public health and the number one rule of development is that if you don't have all of your stakeholders at the table, your, uh, your solution is probably going to fail. Um, and so with that, um, I hope that I can listen a lot this year, bring all of our stakeholders to the table and really find ways to make sure that all of our students in South Carolina, no matter where they live or what opportunities they've had in the past, have this opportunity um, to be part of our STEM workforce because uh, we have a, just a consilience of events here in our state that will let us, um, or let us move forward and into the future. Thank you so much. Okay, wow. So our theme is where's your STEM? It's all around you. It's with students like these in first robotics. It's like our friends at SC Bio. It's in the hearts and minds of young student leaders for Million Women Mentors. It's from people who, who support economic growth in our state, like our friends at SC Competes. It's in Rock Hill in my backyard with the Comporium. 
It's at Duke Energy providing power and ideas all across the state. It's in learning blade lessons. It's in classrooms. It's in SCE TV. It's in the souls of some great, wonderful STEM teacher leaders, including our new STEM educator of the year, Kristen Bullington, who's still collecting herself. <laughs> Don't worry, you've got a year. <laughs> And I would be remiss if I did not thank one person, one special person, whose idea it was to create STEM Education Day at the state capitol. And that person is Representative Celeste Davis, who snuck in. <laughs> and is hiding behind a pillar, but she can hide no more because I'm gonna ask her to give us the benediction. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, it's always great to be here and it's always great to be around folks that love education and realize the importance of education, particularly STEM education in the state of South Carolina. I want to thank uh, Tom Peters, our executive director of the South Carolina Coalition of Mathematics and Science. Um, yes, maybe it was my idea, but every idea person's got to have an action person. And he's my get it done guy, right? So um, Tom, I appreciate everything you've done um, for the last six years in, in developing where we are here today. I want to congratulate all of our teachers. Um, your speeches were spot on and you guys get it, right? Um, our, teacher, our new STEM teacher of the year said, if we don't have all of the advocates at the table, we're not gonna get the best solution. So I've gone from STEM education or STEM day, right? At the Capitol, we've gone to STEM week and STEM month. I have a bigger vision and I'm working on that vision legislation. I haven't filed it yet. So the cat's not totally out of the bag, but we're investing in the future of our state and the possibilities are truly limitless. I truly believe that. So I'm working on some legislation that will address some of the key concepts that you guys talked about, um, collaborating and really sort of putting our money where our mouth is, right? And, and really truly lifting the efforts of STEM education in the state of South Carolina. I, um, like I said, I have visions and I hope you will all join me as we continue to do the great work of STEM education in the South, state of South Carolina. Thank you so much. Y'all have a good day. That concludes our program. Thank you for being here. Do great things and come back next year.